and bone fractures. Uh, there's a law, it's called Wolf's Law, um, that basically states that anywhere the most force uh, or demand is on a bone, the thicker that portion of the bone will be. So <clears throat> wherever that weight-bearing portion is going to be, the, the bone is going to be stronger in that spot, which makes sense, I think. Um, long bones are always going to be thickest midway along the shaft um, where bending could be great depending you know on weight and movement and curved bones are thickest where they are most likely to buckle meaning that if you were to bend it the place where it would most likely break that would be where it would be the thickest <clears throat> um, trabecula which is the uh, bony portion of spongy bone um, form uh, along lines of stress. Large bony projections occur where heavy active muscles attach, meaning that there's going to be a very large spot if a big muscle or, um, you know, needs to attach via a uh, tendon. So this is just a picture to explain where um, it's showing at the top you have your body weight against this portion called the head of the femur. This is the femur, the largest bone in your body. And it's your thigh bone, if you don't know. And you can see <clears throat> where the most stress would be um, placed on it. And so you're going to have the thickest portion um, of the actual shaft right where most of that stress is occurring. Um, unfortunately, not all bones can uh, stay strong. Sometimes we overdo it or move the wrong way and we break a bone. And so a bone fracture um, can be classified in numerous different ways. And we're not going to be covering all the different fractures, just the main types of fractures. Um, so they're classified by the position of the bone ends after fracture, meaning that are they still lined up or are they going to be displaced? The completeness of the break, you don't always break a bone all the way through. The orientation of the bone to the long axis and whether or not the bone ends penetrate the skin. So <clears throat> there's non-displaced and displaced. So non-displaced are going to be where the bone ends retain their normal position, meaning they're not um, going to be uh, away from one another in the middle or um, I'm not explaining this well, I'm sorry. Uh, basically, they're still in their normal alignment. There's just a fracture through the bone. When it's displaced, the two ends are no longer going to be um, not attached to one uh, each other, but they're going to not be lined up any longer. So one is going to be higher than the other side. <clears throat> then we have complete um, fractures which are broken all the way through, incomplete where the bone didn't break all the way through, and linear where the fracture is going to be parallel to the long axis of the bone. Then we have transverse which is the opposite um, of what we just talked about and so this fracture is going to be perpendicular to the long axis. Compound breaks are pretty serious. Um, they're when uh, the end of the bone actually penetrates or breaks through the skin. And in the case of a, a compound fracture, you end up increasing the um, chance of infection because you no longer have your skin protecting you from bacteria. And then simple is considered to be closed, which it does not penetrate the skin. Um, there's going to be a couple of pictures that are going to follow um, what I'm talking about, so it'll make a little bit more sense when you see it, but <clears throat> comminuted are um, bone frag where the bone fragments into three or more pieces. It's very common in elderly people who have osteoporosis. Um, spiral is really common to sports um, or uh, athletes because a lot of times when you're playing a sport, you're planting your foot and you're twisting your body around, and when you twist, Sometimes the bone can actually um, break in a twisting uh, fashion, so it's called a spiral fracture. And then depressed 
is where um, the, bo the broken bone is going to press inward. Um, very typical of a, like a blunt force um, on the skull. Uh, compression is where you've um, compressed the bone and it is basically um, crushed in many different places. Um, that This is very common in the um, spinal column. Uh, an epiphyseal uh, fracture is where the epiphysis separates from the diaphysis. And um, this is something, if you've ever heard of somebody breaking a bone at the growth plate, this would be an example of that. And basically, um, if you break a bone at the growth plate and you're still growing, it can cause serious problems um, because it will ossify that um, hyaline cartilage. And then green stick um, is an incomplete fracture, very, very common in children because if you think of a, um, like a branch that is still very green, if you bend it, it doesn't just snap, it's because it's so flexible. Children's bones are a little bit more flexible than adult bones. And so what can happen is it can bend but not fully break all the way through. So the next couple of um, slides are just pictures. And um, the common muted, that's the one where um, it's a little bit older. It breaks in many different places. But again, bones are more brittle when you get um, uh, a little older. And this would be in the tibia and the uh, fibula area. The compression, again, I said that it's where, you know, two bones are crushed. And so um, this could happen in the vertebra. <clears throat> a spiral break, you can see that obviously this individual um, twisted. This is the tibia. And they twisted, and so you have that spiral motion of the actual fracture. The epiphyseal plate um, fracture, or epiphyseal fracture, uh, you can see that the entire epiphyses, which is, you know, that knobby portion on the ends of long bones, is detached from the diaphysis of the bone. <clears throat> then a depressed or a depression fracture, um, you can see that it's n typical of a skull fracture. And so there's a place in the skull where it's been actually pushed inward. And then this is what I was trying to explain with the green stick. You can see that the bone actually bent. This is again the um, tibia and the bone bent, but it didn't actually break all the way through.